All right, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining my talk today. Um, in the next 35, 40 minutes, I'm going to talk about Python on our uh, platforms. So this is the agenda for, st for today. Um, after a brief introduction uh, to set the scene, uh, I will cover Python on Linux and Windows operating systems. And as Python uh, is one of the main languages for machine learning, I thought to, uh, the, it deserved a coverage as well. At the end, we will see that what gaps uh, we have today and what the next steps are. So um, I start introducing myself. Uh, my name is Diego Russo. And for my entire career, I've been using Python in a variety of environments. Um, in the last 12 years, uh, I've been working at ARM in Cambridge. Um, during this time, I've been in different departments, and si since 2020, I've been in the machine learning group. Almost three years ago, um, I started also um, um, a Python Guild, which is a, an internal Python community where we organize talks, events, summit, and etc. cetera. Uh, but in the last few months, I've been doing a secondment within the company, which is kind of a, a rotation in the open source group. And the goal of the secondment is to investigate C Python on our uh, platforms. Uh, in today's presentation, I want to share with you what uh, I discovered so far. So let's chat something. Uh, can you please your uh, Can you please raise your hand uh, if you know what uh, if you know ARM or what uh, ARM does? Okay, that's good. <laughs> but I'm going to cover a bit uh, the what the uh, what ARM does anyway. So um, ARM creates the designs of microprocessors, GPUs, and other technology. Then uh, it sells these designs to partners to create silicon, uh, silicon chips from it. Beside the designs, ARM provides software and tools for supporting the, uh, the, the ecosystem. Um, as an intellectual property company, an IP company, uh, the business model is based around license, which is given to a customer to use a specific IP. And once the customer creates the start selling the product, the ARM will receive a fee for every product sold. And these are called royalties. Uh, finally, I want to mention the huge ecosystem of partners, and this is very important to highlight because you can see throughout the presentation, uh, ecosystem partners uh, play a critical role uh, for the success of ARM, and in the picture you can see, uh, you can recognize some of the, the big names out there, and some of them are uh, here Europe Python as well. And as part of this engagement with our partners, a big part is done um, through the open source group. Uh, the open source group works um, at any level of the software stack, from the uh, lower level with the software hardware interfaces up to high level languages and applications. Uh, we have our own uh, open source projects, but also we contribute to hundreds of third party open source projects. Uh, as an example here, we can see LLVM, uh, TensorFlow, uh, GNU Linux, and of course, projects in the, in the Python ecosystem. And ARM is everywhere. Um, think about a piece of technology, and very likely uh, there is an ARM IP implemented in it. We can find IP, uh, ARM IP in microcontrollers, smartphones, laptops, cars, appliances, and etc. But in this presentation, I want to uh, focus though, on two main markets. So the first one is the cloud, where uh, the infrastructure requires the performance and the power efficient uh, compute foundation build, for instance, on, on ARM Neoverse. We're go going to cover what ARM Neoverse is later. Um, uh, Neoverse is all uh, major public clouds nowadays, and every developer across the world can get access to a modern cloud based on ARM. And the second market is uh, Windows on ARM. Uh, for instance, the Windows Dev Kit 2023 or Project Volterra is a mini desktop form factor to help developers uh, build Windows applications that leverage the power of an ARM processor. This is the, Windows, uh, this is the first Windows on ARM uh, developer kit. Uh, inside there is a Snapdragon uh, SOC. 
and uh, it's uh, ready to install a comprehensive ARM native um, developer toolchain. But nowadays we can find also other devices that support Windows on ARM like uh, Surface Pro 9, Surface Pro X, uh, there is the Lenovo ThinkPad X13 and etc. So um, let's see Python on Arc64 first. Uh, first of all, I want to recognize all the effort that the upstream community um, has done to enable ARM architectures. So ARM architectures and Python uh, share a long history together. Uh, I've dug around the, uh, the C Python history and it seems that the first ever commit related to an ARM architecture was back in 2001. And the Arc64 support instead has been added in 2014. Uh, but before continuing, let me define what Arc64 is. So Arc64 is the name of the 64-bit extension of ARM architecture, and it was first introduced with the ARM V8.0a uh, in 2011. Uh, before that, ARM processor were 32-bit only. But um, what are the changes related to C Python? Uh, C Python is written in a way that can be compiled uh, to support multiple architectures uh, with a very low effort. In fact, changes are more related to tooling used around it, like uh, build and install installation scripts. Then in 2019, the PEP 599 has been created and accepted. This PEP defines the uh, Many Linux 2014 platform tag. And it is important because it officially introduces the support for ARM platforms like ARM v7 and ARM v8. Um, the ARM v7L is the 32-bit little India version, and the ARM v8 is the ARC64. Now, let's see what ARM and its partner have done to enable the Python ecosystem on ARM. As part of the first launch of ARM instances on the uh, public cloud, we wanted the developers to have a smoother experience when dealing with the Python ecosystem. So basically, if a developer installs a build distribution package, it should just work without falling back to a recompilation step from the source distribution. So this is done uh, with a, in a collaboration with an ARM partner it started in 2020 and lasted for a couple of years. During this time frame, almost 2,900 packages were analyzed. So by testing them on x86 and arc64, and then see uh, what their issues were. The failing ones then have been sorted in a priority list and, and fixed. After a couple of years, more than 200 Python pro projects have been enabled by uh, generating arc64 build distributions. Uh, very quickly, I want to mention Condaforge. Um, although we have acted just on a dozen of uh, packages, Condaforge seems to be kind of a healthier ecosystem as they have a migration pump or for Arc64 packages, uh, although the migration is coupled with uh, uh, PowerPC64 Lithuanian packages. You can see the progress uh, of the migrated uh, packages over time, and the migration seems very close to an end. So far, we have seen the uh, enablement of the Python ecosystem on Arc64, but what, what about performance? If you go on speed.python.org, you see a series of data and graphs of benchmarks. Uh, it's all good except one thing, they are, there is no reporting of Arc64 results. Uh, the website uh, is powered by CodeSpeed, which is a Django application that runs the web interface, uh, the API and the database. Uh, the benchmarks instead are part of uh, the Pi Performance benchmark suite. Uh, Pi Performance can then upload benchmarks data directly into code speed, so they are very well uh, integrated together. So I thought I can take this software and replicate the infrastructure internally, which I did. So I set up an internal instance of code speed, and via Jenkins, I scheduled uh, Pi Performance. Uh, runs on different machines that we have uh, within the company. Then I run a series of experiments which are listed in the slide and I'm going to talk in, about, uh, uh, to talk in, uh, in the next uh, slides. And 
one of my goal is to make these matrix uh, publicly available. So for that, I started conversation in the uh, public Python forum. So let's see how 3.10 and 3.11 compares each other on Neoverse and N1. So Neoverse is the arms line of uh, infrastructure CPUs, uh, which provides a balanced CPU design optimized for delivering both performance per watt and performance per dollar. You can find Neoverse N1 processors uh, in the AWS Graviton 2 instances, and this is based on AMV 8.2a specifications. By now, you should be aware that of the performance benefits that Python 3.11 compares, uh, brings uh, compared to Python 3.10. What you see in the picture is the manifestations of it on Arc64. Um, apologies if the task, text is, uh, is small, but what is important is to have the full picture of, of the whole uh, benchmarks. So on the x-axis, there are all the micro benchmarks belonging to uh, pipe performance, and on the y-axis, there is the speed improvement expressed in percentage. They are all ordered by speed improvements. On the far left, there is the first benchmark, which is um, Delta Blue, that brings 49% uh, speed improvement if you run with Python 3.11 compared to 3.10. And the other side is that the last benchmark coverage uh, is 35% lower with Python 3.11. So except the last five benchmarks, uh, we can see that uh, most of them run faster on, uh, uh, with Python 3.11. Uh, similarly, uh, the same thing happens on Neoverse N2, uh, which is the next generation of N series, and it's the first processor to be based on ARM v9. Uh, these CPUs can be found, for instance, on Alibaba Cloud. I run experiments also on, on uh, Neoverse v1, and it has a consistent uh, behavior as well. Um, v1 can be found on AWS Graviton 3 instances, and it's, it, it is based on um, v8.4 specification. So bottom line, nothing to worry about. about. Python 3.11 performs as expected on Arc64. So I want to touch briefly on the distribution channels of Python. So Python can be installed uh, in different ways. You can use the distribution package, uh, the Dead Snakes PPA, uh, PyM, or you can compile it from source by yourself. Uh, these binaries are compiled in different ways, so don't assume they are all the same. And I want to highlight this because in my experiments I've seen they have an impact uh, in the performance metrics, although it's minimal. Uh, bottom line is to use whatever you have available, and if you really care about performance, you can try different combinations to see what best works for your workload. You can compile with different flags, so some investigation is required, but this is only if uh, you care about performance. Otherwise, the, uh, the standard routes are more than okay. Um, then, in order to preserve compatibility and portability, uh, distribution packages on Arc64 are all compiled against AMV 8.0, which is the first version of Arc64. So this is the, also the default behavior in, in GCC. Um, for AMV 8, uh, we have, for instance, versions from 8.0 to 8.9, and for V9, we have until 9.4. So this means that packages in the distribution, and when I say packages, not just Python, all of them, uh, don't make use of all the new features of this specification unless the user recompiles the application. And this is exactly what I did. I host compiled C Python on different systems uh, in, on the, with different CPUs like N1, V1, and N2, and passed the uh, optimization flag mCPU uh, native, and check if the performance were affected. With the mCPU flag, you can specify the target processor to optimize and tune for, and with native, basically, it picks the architecture of the host systems. For this reason, I've host compiled uh, CPython. 
I've uh, also tried different uh, compilers. Uh, I tried GCC 11, uh, 12, and 13. I think 13 came out this year. Um, the, the result that is uh, using the flag MCPU doesn't really affect the performance except in one case. So GCC 11 versus GCC 12, both with the MCPU native uh, uh, passed to the, the compiler on uh, NeoVS V1. Basically, on, on that case, I had a 10% improvements. So I think the reason is NeoVerse CPUs are relatively new, and the, uh, the compile support is not fully optimized and tuned yet for these CPUs. So I expect these kind of to improve uh, over time with the newer uh, releases of the, of the compiler. Uh, now let's see some benchmark results that I run on AWS. So I've run them on different flavors. Uh, the C6G, which is Graviton 2, C7G, which is uh, Graviton 3, and then a comparable X86 one, which is C6I. Um, so for the sake of brevity, let's see uh, just Graviton 3 versus the X86. The meaning of the data in the picture is the same of earlier. So micro benchmarks, uh, micro benchmarks on the x-axis and the speed improvements in the y-axis. We can see that C7G performs better than C6i just on the last nine benchmarks on the far right. So this means that there is room for improvements for single core, uh, single process, uh, process performance. I've also done a cost analysis, though, for the whole workload. So I measured how much it would cost to run the whole high performance suit. Uh, it, but Graviton 3 results to be more cost effective uh, because, of course, it's cheaper uh, by the hour than X86 one. So um, as I was saying uh, at the booth uh, with some uh, people yesterday, when is about performance, and there is also uh, there is always a trade-off. So you need to understand uh, what's important for your workload, if you want, and if you want save some money for for the workload, and etc. But also, I've run benchmarks for measuring multi-processes performance. So the way I did it is to run an instance of high performance for every uh, core present on on the machine. And for this kind of experiment, I've chosen the, the biggest flavors uh, available. The uh, 16X large has 64 CPUs, and the 32X large has 128 CPUs, vCPUs. So I've also tweaked Pi performance to, for running benchmarks for longer. Uh, basically, the whole experiment lasted about for 30 hours. So the, the motivation for this experiment is to simulate a cloud workload. So use multiple cores for longer in order to avoid uh, the boost clock spikes that belong to shorter workloads. And what we can see is that Graviton 3 requires almost half of the time to run the whole wo workload. Can you guess why? Well, I think it's written there. <laughs> so uh, the, the, this because the C6i flavors have the uh, SMT, which is simultaneous multi-threading uh, enabled. B basically, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the open system sees two cores, two virtual cores for uh, every physical one. So two processes compete each other to use one physical core. And this doesn't happen on Graviton 3. When you, you have 64 VCP, VCPUs, you have 64 physical cores. So if your workload requires multi-process, uh, Graviton 3 machines perform much, much better compared to the X86 one. <clears throat> now, uh, <clears throat> let's have a look to uh, Windows on ARM. So Windows on ARM uh, support has been added since Python 3.8, but no official builds were present until today, basically. In fact, uh, Python 3.11 officially supports um, Windows on ARM, and this has been possible thanks to the joint effort between ARM, Qualcomm, Microsoft, 
six technology and Linaro. The overall goal of this partnership is to have an ecosystem which support native development on Windows on ARM. And when I say ecosystem, it's not just Python, but all the software that uh, you, see, you see there. And of course, Python is part of this ecosystem. Um, I mentioned earlier there are nowadays uh, devices on the market the way you can buy a Windows on ARM uh, machine. And this is how they did it. Uh, similarly to the Arc64 enablement, uh, the top 520 packages have been tested on Windows on ARM. And the good thing is over 70% succeeded it. So uh, 135 packages failed uh, due to the lack of direct or indirect, indirect uh, Windows on ARM uh, support. They've acted on Python package directly, but also on dependencies needed to build such packages, like third-party libraries and toolchain packages. So it's not just uh, Python. Um, also, Linaro has been hosting a Surface Pro X in the official CPython buildbot instance uh, to enable the build of ARM64 Python version. And of course, if you are a Windows user, you have a Windows on ARM uh, machine, if you have any feedback and all you want to contribute to it, there is a, a collaborative space where you can read all the latest updates and get in touch uh, with Linaro. Linaro is driving this um, these, uh, these activity. Then if you want to build a package uh, or for Windows on ARM, a Python package for Windows on ARM, uh, don't worry because it, this is possible if, even if you don't have access to a Windows on ARM platform. So you can build it, use cross-compilation. Cross-compilation is uh, still the best uh, approach. And then you can test it on uh, using, for instance, QEMU, Wine, and Docker on an Arc64 Linux. Uh, on the slide, the, there is a link of guides on how to do this. Linaro wrote a guide on how to do that. So uh, now the question is, why do we want to build uh, a, a native package for Windows on ARM? So the answer can be found in the, in the performance. So Windows 11 on ARM can run x64 binaries via emulation, x64 are x86 uh, binaries, but uh, uh, 64 bit. Um, and this, but you can run it via emulation, but this has an impact on, on performance. In the case of uh, Pi Performance, I run basically um, Pi Performance using Python AM, D64 version, so the x64 version, and also I run uh, the official 3.11 ARM64 um, Python. And Python ARM64 is almost twice as fast than AMD's uh, 64 version, which is emulated. Uh, the um, the non-native binary work, but um, they are much slower than the native, and of course this has an impact on the user experience of, uh, of, the, of this platform and the application. So my recommendation is to start building native package for Windows on ARM. Um, users of these platforms will really appreciate the effort. Right, as a uh, last part of the presentation, let's see what has been done uh, in the machine learning world. At the beginning of the presentation, I did say that since 2020, I am in the machine learning group. In fact, the, 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 um, I work in the same team that collaborate with Google on TensorFlow Lite and TensorFlow, TensorFlow model optimization. Uh, TensorFlow Lite is a library for deploying models on mobiles and microcontrollers and other edge devices. And the contribution that uh, we have been doing are all around uh, quantization support. Uh, the TensorFlow model optimization toolkit instead is a suit for uh, tools for optimizing machine learning models uh, for uh, deployment and execution. We have contributed with different optimization uh, techniques and how uh, to apply them uh, together uh, without uh, affecting uh, performance. Uh, this is an ongoing engagement that ARM has, 
and the main goal is to uh, basically to run neural net models efficiently on ARM IP. But what about TensorFlow packages for ARM platforms? Uh, so thanks to um, a collaboration between AWS, ARM, Google, and Linaro, starting from TensorFlow 2.10, uh, ARC64 packages are available on PyPI.org. So if you go on AWS, spin up an EC2 machine, and you do pip install TensorFlow, it just works. Also from TensorFlow 2.10, uh, there is uh, an integration of uh, the ARM compute library for the ARM architecture, it's called ACL, and through the 1DNN uh, uh, API, uh, this is done to accelerate the performance on ARC64 CPUs, so it's also optimized for that platform. So again, yes, you can just pp install it and it will be optimized. Uh, Windows on ARM, though, doesn't have an official package yet, but uh, in the slide, I put a link on how, how to build it. So if you are a Windows on ARM user, you have a way to build TensorFlow for Windows on ARM. Uh, PyTorch, for PyTorch instead, uh, so the Arc64 packages are available since version 1.8. But if you want to test the bleeding edge version of PyTorch, um, does provide Docker images uh, that basi basically contain the both OpenBlast, and which is the default backend, and one DNN plus ACL backend. So the same backend that TensorFlow has. Um, like TensorFlow, there is no uh, Windows on ARM package yet available. Uh, but uh, Linaro kind of is keeping track of, of the issue. I've seen that there is uh, an issue open on the PyTorch um, GitHub. Also, uh, in this slide, I want to highlight all the contributions that uh, we have been doing in the machine learning space. So um, the first one is Apache TVM, which is a, a machine learning compiler framework for CPUs, GPUs, and machine learning accelerators. We have added support for ACL, for instance, uh, contributed to the packaging uh, and the SCLI, and added support for many microcontroller platforms. Um, uh, in OpenBlast, instead, the uh, contributions were all around NeoVerts and uh, NeoVerts course and SV. SV is, stands for Scalable Vector Extension. Um, and last but not least, we have implemented some faster math uh, routines in NumPy. So we have seen Python on Arc64, on Windows on ARM, and related to machine learning. So I guess now it's time to understand what's next and how the whole Python story can be improved on our platforms. So let's start um, analyzing the gaps that we have today. So PEP11, uh, which is the C Python of platform support, defines the support tiers for CPython, uh, which are three in total. Currently, the Arc64 platforms are in tier two. It would be great to have, to start a conversation to move these in tier one next to X36. So there are requirements to be satisfied, so we can take some action to move this platform to tier one, for instance. Uh, second, um, as we so earlier, uh, speed.python.org doesn't have any ARC64 benchmarks, metrics, and as I said earlier, I'm personally working on it to get this fixed. Uh, the Windows on ARM store is still in early stages, so it's kind of recent, uh, but uh, it's uh, progressing very quickly. So I'm, sh I'm sure the situation will improve over time, and you can help if you are providing Python packages, you can start building packages for this platform so uh, users don't have some uh, blockers to use this platform. Um, last but not least, the single process performance. Whilst multi-processes performance are excellent compared to x86, we have seen that single process performance lags a bit behind 
and they could be improved. So uh, we maybe we can do something about that. Uh, it's uh, in the, the rest of my second, and I will dig a little bit more deeper on the reason why uh, these benchmarks don't perform as well as X86. Um, I think these are the gaps that I think we have today. And now we need to understand how we can work together to make uh, the whole Python on ARM story a better one. As a first step, uh, again, try migrating your workload to ARM. So if you have any, any workloads in your company, uh, try to market it to ARM. So the migration sh at this point in time should be seamless and painless. But if you see any issues, I think the best thing to do is raise the issue with the upstream communities of the projects that you're using so we can get this fixed. Um, and as I said earlier, basically nowadays every developer can access ARM platforms on all, all the clouds, so give it a try. Also, if you provide a package, start building and validating uh, the package on ARM platforms. Uh, we saw that there are real benefits in terms of performance on Windows on ARM, for instance, and more and more people are migrating workloads to ARC64. And the last, we are here to help. Feel free to engage directly with us. Uh, during the, the conference, we are uh, the both for we are available for a chat, and we are more than uh, than happy to help you out. Um, of course, another way to engage uh, after the conference uh, is uh, with uh, the ARM Develop program. This was launched last year. Uh, there are about 5,000 developers on that platform, uh, where you can ask questions, uh, share your experience. Uh, basically, it's a Discord server where you can have access to ARM experts uh, who are actually ARM employees. We have office hours, so where you can ask questions, and there is a portal with guides, and we keep adding guides and how to, how, how to do things, and you can ask your, uh, your question. So go on uh, arm.com, develop a program, sign up, um, or feel free to come our booth. You can sign up there. Um, thanks for your patience and staying with me till the end. Uh, I've finished with a presentation, and now if you have any question, I'll do my best to answer it. Thank you. Thank you, Diego, for the uh, presentation about the uh, state of Python on different ARM platforms. Now, uh, if you have any questions, there's a microphone in the back, so feel free to... Go there and ask questions if you have any. Hi. Uh, Hi. Thank you for the talk. I have a question regarding the optimizations. So you mentioned, like in the last last slides, uh, that you contributed to well some improved routines, for instance, from NumPy. Um, and then there was a bit earlier the fact that um, right now they're using Linux 2014 or 20, 2010, right? So the, the optimizations you contributed, are they like um, backwards compatible to ARMv8 or is it basically you can enable more if you recompile with nat native flags? So I think the optimization you're talking about uh Is this one? Is it this one? Yes, it's related to this. Yes. So what I did uh, basically, I uh, so GCC targets 8.0, so which is the basic uh, Arc 64 specification. So this means uh, the all the next specification 8.2, 3, 4, 5 that introduce new hardware features, the software cannot use it until you recompile it. So it was an experiment to see. What if I recompile C Python passing this MCPU? So basically trying to target that specific CPU and tune it for it and see if this has an effect. And then once I have the binary compiled for that platform, 
then I run Pi Performance and I've seen that there are no real benefits except for one specific case which was GCC 11 versus GCC 12 with a, with a flag passed on uh, V1, I think. Uh, yes, on V1. And the reason why is uh, I think we, V1 was uh, one of the first uh, CPUs to be implemented, so the compiler team had uh, these uh, optimization added uh, in early stages, so it's more kind of optimized. All right, and in terms of the software contributions you made, uh -huh. um, which is like the the so the, in the type. machine learning side of things. yeah exactly yeah yeah so those are then bound to the current compiler of flags that, that so are so this is the, the, this is um, uh, the the contributions that we do for instance on, on TensorFlow they are fairly generic so that this means that. If you run this stuff on x86, they will benefit x86 as well, right? So they are not specific to any ARM architectures, unless you're talking about ACL, our compute library, which is a library that works all, only on Arc64 and uses all the uh, new features of the, of the hardware, yes. So there are different levels of, of optimizations. So the ones in TensorFlow, they are very high level and related to machine learning, specifically to machine learning. In fact, over there we can see, uh, maybe it's not that, uh, let me see. There are different uh, optimizations like pruning. So you have a neural network model, you start taking out uh, nodes without affecting performance. So you have to, so this is pruning. Then there is clustering as well. So you can take out all other, you can cluster nodes in, uh, in different sets, and then there is the quantization. So basically, you convert from a floating point models to an integer model that could be int 8, int 16, all these kind of things. So it can be used. Then, when you once you have the quantized model, then it can be used on accelerators, for instance. So one of the line of uh, CPUs that we have is an MPU, which is a neural process unit, and these can. Uh, or is it optimized to run quantized model? Uh, so it can run inferences much faster. So there are different level of optimizations that we are acting to. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for your talk. I had maybe two questions. But first, um, I usually hear uh, the benefit of ARM, at least in my circles, that uh, the benefit is mainly around power consumption. And I feel like I missed that in your slides, but do you have a comment on saving power and as a result saving cloud costs? And do you have so, a benchmark uh, on this? It, it was kind of implicit in what uh, I said uh, in the, let me say, no, hold on. Yes, in here, it's more cost effective in a sense that the, the, the cost per hour of the Graviton 3 is, is much cheaper than x86. And mm -hmm. the reason why is for the cloud provider, it's much cheaper to run it because it consumes less power. So that's kind of implicit in a, so the cost benefit is passed to the customer because for uh, the cloud provider, uh, there is uh, they need to pay less electricity, they, pay, they need to pay less electricity for cooling the server farm, all these kind of things. Okay, thank you. Um, another question uh, on the Windows in ARM part. On the end of the slide, I think you mentioned it's almost twice as performant, almost as an afterthought. Is that again because of the multiprocess splitting? No, this is for because it's emulation, basically, as you can see here. So the graph, the blue is the baseline of the um, ARM64. So in this case, less is the better. So I put the baseline of ARM64 as one. And as you can see, the, uh, the AMD64 are much higher than uh. in terms of running benchmarks of the Pi Performance suit. So it works. So if you go on Windows and ARM, download the Python um, for AMD64, you install it, it works. It runs, you, you can 
pp install everything and it works, but it's slower because it goes in binary translation and hence in emula emulation. So there is a difference between also uh, in the usage of Python. So if you use Python uh, AMD 64, the x86 uh, x version, then when you do a pip install and it requires a, 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 build uh, a, a build distribution, it will fetch the um, EMD64 one mm -hmm. because it's linked to the AMD64 Python version. If you go use the ARM64, and you require um, uh, a build distribution, then it will fetch the ARM um, 64. And here is where potentially you can have issues because not everyone is producing the ARM 64 binary for Windows. So my recommendation is to start building these packages for the platform. Okay, thank you, that helps. No worries. There are no remote questions. Um, there are also no more questions in the room. Thank you very much, Diego, for your talk. And uh, please give it a... Thank you.